the way amendments to the opposition day motions are dealt with reflects an outdated approach. Which <laughs> You'll be going and not be voting. We completely appear to be doing things in a way that's never been done before. Can I ask for you, Vice Mr. Speaker, what is the point of an opposition day if it's going to be done like this? Where on earth is the Speaker of the House of Commons? How, How do we bring him to that seat to explain? To, how do we bring him to this house now to explain? To the Scottish National Party, why our views and our votes in this House are irrelevant to him. That was never my intention for it to end up like this. I was absolutely, absolutely convinced that the decision was done with the right intentions. We have seen the SNP Opposition Day turn into a Labour Party Opposition Day. I am afraid that that is treating myself and my colleagues in the Scottish National Party with complete and utter contempt. And I will take significant convincing that your position is not now intolerable. I have therefore decided to select the amendments both in the name of the Prime Minister and in the name of the Leader of the Opposition. Because the operation of standing order number 31 will prevent another amendment from being moved after the government has moved its amendment. I will exceptionally call the opposition from bench spokesperson to move their amendment at the beginning of the debate. Once, once the SNP spokesperson have moved their motion, at the end of the debate, the House will have an opportunity to take a decision on the official opposition amendment. If that is agreed. If that is agreed to, there is a final question on the main motion as amended. If the official opposition amendment is not agreed to, I will call the Minister to move the Government amendment formally. That will engage the... Order! I'm going to finish... That will engage the provisions of Standing Order No. 31. Finally, I should tell the House that, in my opinion, the operation of Standing Order No. 31, which comes the way amendments to the Opposition Day motions are dealt with, reflects an outdated approach. Which restricts. Which restricts. Be going and not be voting. <laughs> well, that's the first one to leave then. <laughs> if you want to, do it. Now then, firstly, I should tell the House, in my opinion, the operation of standing order, which comes the way amendments, opposition motions are dealt with, reflects an outdated approach, which restricts the operations which can put the House. It is my intention to ask the Procedure Committee to consider the operation. <laughs> I now call Brendan Hara to move the motion. Point of order. Point of order. Oh, it but I seek your advice because obviously I've taken advice from the clerks. This is the SNP's opposition day. Yep. And the purpose of an opposition day is for our party to have the ability to put forward our business. We've already had a significant delay to the start of this motion, which has significant interest to the extent we dropped our second motion. And now we're completely appear to be doing things in a way that's never been done before. Yeah. Can I ask for your advice, Mr Speaker, what is the point of an opposition day if it's going to be done like this? Yeah. Madam Deputy Speaker, may I firstly begin my point of order by just re-emphasising that we are all here tonight to vote on the civilian 
deaths yeah. in Gaza and the appalling situation that has been faced by nationals in Israel too. We all must remember that. Madam Deputy Speaker, if I have listened correctly to what has just been said, on SNP Opposition Day, <coughs> should the Labour Party's motion be carried, then the SNP's vote will not be held. Yeah. Secondly, if I, have, if I have read the clerk's letter to all members correctly, which was sent to the, to the Speaker, this was a consequence that he was warned of. Yeah. So can you please advise me, where on earth is the Speaker of the House of Commons? Yeah. How, how do we bring him to that seat to explain to, how do we bring him to this House now to explain to the Scottish National Party why our views and our votes in this House are irrelevant to him? Well, I thank the, I thank the honourable gentleman, right honourable gentleman, for his uh, point of order. Madam Deputy Speaker, follow to my earlier remarks and on the back of the remarks which have been there uh, made there. I am afraid that you did not provide clarity to me in relation to one, where the Speaker of the House of Commons is. Yeah, yeah. Secondly, what mechanisms are available to members to bring him who, to this House yeah. to explain that the SNP Opposition Day has turned into a Labour Opposition yeah. Day? And thirdly, and most importantly, I must insist to you, Madam yes. Deputy Speaker, yes. that the SNP motion is voted on yes. first. Yes. As the Chair of the Procedure Committee has just outlined, Madam, Madam, De Madam Deputy Speaker, I I'm afraid that I am going to have to try for a third time. Can you please advise me where the Speaker of the House of Commons is? What mechanisms are available to Suspend bring him to this House? And as we wait for a deliberation to be made in that regard, I move that this House, that you use the powers that I trust you have to suspend this House. then interrupts his own point of order. If he would just, uh, I will not be suspending the House. We need to put these questions. We need to put these questions. Mr. Speaker will be in his place tomorrow. Point of order, Dr. Matthew Offord. Madam Deputy Speaker, where is the Speaker? Yeah. 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 The honourable gentleman is. I'm afraid he'll have to make do with me. I know it's a great disappointment. Mr. Speaker will be here tomorrow in his place. There are perfectly legitimate views on different sides as to the propriety of today's proceedings. However, I would just say gently to some honourable members opposite who have said that you cannot possibly have an opposition day motion being amended by another opposition party, that some of the members who are shouting the loudest Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. I would just remind some of those who have been shouting the loudest on the other side of the House that they personally voted on the 13th of May 1999 for a Conservative opposition motion amending a Liberal Democrat motion on an opposition day. But far, far more importantly, surely, Madam Deputy Speaker, is the fact that the 
behaviour of many honourable members in the chamber today will have made a lot of people in this country very nervous about the way we conduct our business when we're dealing with some of the most important matters of state. And most significantly, it has been the tradition of the British parliamentary democracy that if a government loses control of its foreign policy, it has lost the confidence of the House by definition. And consequently, you have an immediate general election. The question is that the House do sit in private. As many as are of that opinion say aye. We'll have a division. Division, clear the lobby. I wish to respond to the point of order raised by the leader. I wish to respond to the point raised by the leader of the house. Today's debate was exceptional in its intensity with which all parties wish to secure a vote on their own propositions. It took the decisions which were intended to allow the House the widest range of propositions just, right, widest range of propositions on which to express a view. I wanted to do the best, and it was my wish. Just, just sorry. It was my wish to do the best by every member of this house. Yes. I take I take very seriously I no no the danger is that that's why I wanted everybody to be able to express because I am very very concerned about the security of all members Let me just take this through I was very concerned, I am still concerned, and that's why the meetings I've had today is about the security of members, their families, and the people that are involved. And I've got to say, I regret how oh, it's ended up. It was not my intention. I wanted the all. I wanted all to ensure they could express their views and all sides of the House could vote. As it was, in particular, the <coughs> SNP were ultimately unable to vote on their proposition. I am, and I regret, with the deep... With my sadness that it's ended up on like that, in this position, that was never my intention for it to end up like this. I was absolutely... Absolutely convinced that the decision was done with the right intentions. I recognise, I, I recognise the strength of feeling of members on this issue. Clear today has not shown the House at its best. I will reflect on my. I will reflect on my part in that of the course. I recommit myself to ensuring that all members of this House are treated fairly. I do not, I do not want it to have ended like this. I want to say to the House, I will meet with all the key players of each party. I think it is right that I meet with each one. And that, can I just put that correct? I've never met with Sue Gray today. I didn't bump into her today. I'm offended by that comment. I think you'd like to withdraw it. Yeah, because that is the danger that we've ended up with this house in speculation of not what is fact and not factual. I am honest to this house. I am true to this house. I believe in all members of this house. And I try to do I have tried to do what I thought was the right thing for all sides of this house. It is regrettable, and I apologise for, for a decision that didn't end up in the place that I wished for. So I would say no. That I say no. I will meet with the, all the. 
just, just be quiet, please. I will meet with the leaders and with the chief whips and let us have a discussion on what is the best way forward to try and ensure that, and I say again, I thought I was doing the right thing and the best thing, and I regret it and I apologise for how it's ended up. I do take responsibility for my actions, and that's why I want to meet, and that's why I want to meet with the key players who have been involved. Point of order, Mr Speaker. Um, can I firstly begin by echoing your sentiments in relation to the debate that was had in this chamber in relation to the most important of matter matters with regards to the safety of civilians in Gaza and indeed to those in Israel. There has been a difference of view in the House today, but I think that difference of view has been expressed in a way which we can all agree has been in a positive fashion, the best fitting way of any democracy, any functioning democracy. Mr Speaker, whilst I acknowledge your apology, the reality is that you were warned by the clerks of the House that your decision could lead to the SNP not having a vote on our very own Opposition Day. As a result, we have seen the SNP Opposition Day turn into a Labour Party yeah. Opposition Day. I am afraid that that is treating myself and my colleagues in the Scottish National Party with complete and utter contempt. Yeah. And it, I will take significant convincing that your position is not now intolerable. Yeah. To respond to that, and quite rightly, I understand the feeling. As I said, I would like to have that conversation in private. I would like to meet with you as soon as possible. I'm now going to leave it to continue. So, sorry, sorry. Point of order. No, come. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Um, can I just make a point of order that actually the, the amendment in the name of the Leader of the Opposition was this evening passed unanimously, um, and therefore... Yes, it was. And therefore... And therefore... I don't think now is the time, and what I want to do, I want to move on and I want to meet with the important players. I'm now going to hand over to the Deputy, and I'm just going to leave it at that. I'm grateful, Madam Deputy Speaker. There are, there are two points on which I seek your clarification from what Mr Speaker has just said. The first is that he implied that the proceedings of this House were manipulated uh, with regard to outside intimidation. Um, yeah. that regard was given to things that were yes. said outside on social media <laughs> that were then reacted to within the House. And I think that's quite an important uh, Rubicon that's been crossed yes. and yes. something that may yes. have been crossed without the consent of, of members. Yes. I would like to know where the processes of this House are likely to, to go, given the outside influences that may be brought to bear. And I'd be grateful for some clarification on that. The second issue is that I'm afraid, and as you know, Madam Deputy Speaker, I have the greatest respect for you, but bluntly you seem to have rammed through two divisions uh, that were quite important to quite a lot of members, in which no individual vote will have been recorded. And a number of us had quite thought quite carefully about how we were going to, going to vote in those divisions. Um, and we were essentially, forgive me, taken by surprise um, by those two divisions being rammed through. So I wondered if it would be possible to either void them or run them again. Um, I thank the right honourable gentleman for his point of order. Um, the fact is, I put the question. Nobody called against it. No. No. Point of order, Sir Jacob Rees-Mogg. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. It was quite clear from the level of noise when the question was put that the view of the Deputy Speaker was being challenged. I think it is absolutely extraordinary that that, was, that noise level was deemed to be I. It is inconceivable that anybody hearing it would have thought it was I. And it is quite clear from all our standing orders, all our traditions, that when the Speaker or Deputy's decision is challenged, it should go to a division. Well, I'm extremely sorry. Um, on, I took 
on the voices, I was quite clear where we were. Um, and the, uh, the whole thing would have been considerably clearer if the government had not withdrawn at that point.